Um, I would like to start actually with the, with the oldest work here, which are these three um, pillars, columns. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that I, it seems that everybody from you is very familiar with uh, how Sophia works. But let's say to me, I say it anyway again. Um, you know, you're working with this old found objects. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, this also very, um, the car jacks called in English, mm -hmm. Wagenheber. And um, they are put together and actually they are this material which becomes suddenly like, uh, it seems like maybe they, the ceiling is held by it, or maybe also this power and this energy of maybe extending it. But for me also, what I thought is that it has something, it also looks like falling down like a kette, like, mm -hmm. a, like a chain of, um, because this is like a diamond. For me, it's like a little bit like diamond shapes, mm -hmm. um, which also now in this exhibition come, will come again as a motif, which I think is really great. And I would like to know, you know, do, did you, do you already imagine, you always imagine this also already when you do it in your practice? Yeah, it's, um, I guess it's improvised, so I don't know. I, it, you, have a, you have a schema, you have like a, um, a rule that you want to do, so I was looking for something, what can I have that there are many of, but there are variations, and so I found these and started to tie them together. And then I made the first one, and that was called um, No, 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 like the mm. techno song, mm -hmm. There's No Limits, mm -hmm. with the idea of this, There's No Limits. Uh, and that was also partly because the shape of the letters, mm -hmm. uh, that they have a kind of no, uh, and the shape of these sure. things, they have a kind of, it looks a bit like lots of no's. It piled looks like, up. yeah, like the syntax, syntax in, in many ways about like a zeichen, like a, like a sign, yeah. and then it comes together. And like so this. there's a rhythm in a lot of yeah. the works, which is in the titles as well. I'm interested in a rhythmic quality of materials. And so even you, so even you are using this really one direct, very literal objects, mm. which have a function, mm. and they become dysfunctional totally. This transformation, you, you, it's it's in your conscious. You use it when you make a work. Well, the, the, that they do what they do, or they, uh, well, yeah. that it can become something like an illusion of something, you know, like illusion of some like this energy and yes, you know. an illusion. I think is a great word for a lot of the things that are happening. Which you, you know, for me, up until recently, illusion was like the antithesis of what I was interested in because you know, it's sculpture. That's not about illusion. Painting's about illusion. I argue with my husband who's in the room who's a painter about that almost every day about this well there's imaginary space and I'm like no real life but here there are there are a lot of illusory elements it doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't hold the ceiling up at all in fact mm -hmm. the ceiling holds this up and it's a um yeah, yeah so, I think so illusion is a large element I think this is a very um, interesting quality of your work in, 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 gen in general, actually. And um, because it's always that I now, because of course a little bit, I'm a little bit more familiar with your work, that I always think when I see a piece of what you do, I always think, okay, what is it about what I don't see? I mean, I see this, mm -hmm. but then I think, what, is, what else is there? What, mm -hmm. can, what can we talk about? So this is like our Einstieg, so to say. But, uh, that's, but that's, what it's about. that's what it's about. I feel that's also how it is in the process of making. It's to do, it, I, I, ask the, I ask the same thing. Mm -hmm. What is it that I don't yet see? That's, what, that's the, the time element that comes up when you're making something. Mm -hmm. It's it, it, everybody who's making stuff in the room, and I know there are a lot, that it's, it's about what you what comes, and in German, I guess it's the Nachal, what comes after you've made something and then, I don't know, you read something or dream something and then some, another new meaning or something new happens politically and so then suddenly there's a, there's a new thing. That's what I'm mm -hmm. looking for. Yeah, it's, it's also like a process, it seems. Mm -hmm. And um, now I would like to go to the work which nobody sees at the moment because it's behind this wall, mm -hmm. but maybe you saw it before, it's this footage 
Fort, also Fortet genannt, uh, the title. And I think that this is really interesting in terms of representation, mm -hmm. because it's like the basic thing you can do for representation. You take a sheet of paper and you rub something through and you have it in one-to-one -one scale. Mm -hmm. So you actually empiricist, right? You mm -hmm. go there and you do. You did it. It's the it's the sculptor's drawing. It's the thing that's it, all sculpt. It's it's a bit it's a bit of kind of a joke about sculptors as well because you know sculptors that are, are meant to deal with reality, like the real thing. The mm -hmm. you know, and and so this is literally that. It's it's uh, just taking a slice of what's of what is there. Yes, and maybe um, you can tell us when this happened, what happened, I mean, you did this in, in which situation? It was the, well, it's, the lock, it's my lockdown piece. <laughs> um, I'd, made, I'd made the rubbings of these, the, with my feet on the, I had these kind of grills, um, what are they called? In guitar. Gen yeah, guitar, Abstreif. Abstreif Fußabstreif yeah. in, in my studio and I'd, and I'd done some kind of d d gestural work with putting, either, first of all, you, you putting feet, graphite on my feet and then just, you know, doing wiping the feet. And I, and I, I liked them, but I also, that I made them and then a month later, the COVID and the first lockdown happened and suddenly, um, I was out at five in the morning with pieces of paper and graphite on my feet and outside peeped the housing blocks on the thing where you couldn't, you couldn't go in. So it, it was a bit like being an avatar, you know, in a computer game where you, you, you try you're, to moving, yeah. you're moving, but you can't go anywhere. But it's also, it, I, it, I guess it all, what happened afterwards, it's also a bit, um, it's the saying, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Here and now, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I guess everything is, but yeah, but, yeah. but also this wiping the feet. It it's a, it's quite an ambiguous gesture because it can be read as I'm on a threshold, which is a a, a um, what's the word? It's the like the, the 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 person on the other end of an invitation. So you're asking to be invited. Yeah. But it means that you're not there yet. Mm. It could also be a, a derogatory gesture. What does it mean? I wipe my feet with you. Oh. It's also a. Yeah, so I'm, I don't care. I, I you know, I had a. There's a kind of little shadow in the back of like peeing on a mat, you know, that you. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Lockdown <laughs> shit, yeah. Nah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, I saw when when we talked about tonight, um, there were more there were more of these rubbings, and I also saw some which looked like manhole or canal deckel. You know, when you go somewhere in the in the earth, actually, mm. not only in front of a closed door. But I thought it's also something where you have some. You could think it's a grid you can go in. There is a door open, a window or whatever, a door, something on the floor in this case but that you actually don't have access to it. Yeah, they're also like a yeah. prison. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not accessible. No. So, so um, this is, but, but the way you did it, and now it's there as an art, like a frame and mm. behind glass. And so is this also about this, this um, representational, like picture making? Is it also about this phenomenon? This is a, an image? This is a... Yeah, I didn't think about that when I was making it. I'm not ignorant of the the grid being so ubiquitous. I did go to art school. We all talked about the grid a lot. <laughs> um, it's a classical, no? We talked, to, we yeah, talked yeah, a lot yeah, about yeah, the grid. Yeah, yeah. You do. Um, but because I wasn't in painting, because I was down in the basement with the sculptors, we didn't talk about that stuff. They were talking about, but, you know, in the sculpture studio, people were writing spaces power in spray paint on their studios and competing to see who could carry the heaviest thing. It's, it's a different situation. Yeah, yeah, okay. So no, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a totally valid question. But yeah. it just wasn't uh, part of my... Of this, what you yeah. thought about it. Okay. 
Um, I also think that now this is next piece is this piece which came I think last yesterday it came to uh, to the exhibition yeah the decision to show it yeah and um, this is also very funny not very funny but it's the the title particle boredom mm. and it's for you know it's it's in German it's a Holzspanplatte you mm. know like and this is I think when you say the English word it looks like, bo like it sounds like this particular board it's called it's called the, this is in, in, in english it's called particle board but american english in british english it's called chipboard but american english it's called particle board and in in german it's spanplatte um genau. but so then it's a yeah it's a pun on particle board and, and this piece is really um for me in this exhibition quite uh, yeah it's very in a way very important because for the betrachter, when, when you don't know about it, it looks like, okay, of course, a Fundstück. It looks like, klar, a Fundstück. Um, uh, what is Found object. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. found object. And then, um, but then if you, if you know, and I asked the um, artist, I said like, mm -hmm, how, but it looks, mm -hmm. and, then, and then you said, oh no, it's a cast. So what actually happened is, die Sophia had this, uh, she, she took it, she took the piece, she found it, she made a, um, eine, eine a, ca a cast. Something. Yeah. And then she destroyed the material, which is, aus dem es bestanden hat, on which it consisted, mm -hmm. and she did make a new cast of it. So actually, you are really cheating us here, you know, mm -hmm. because it looks like this material, when you, when you buy this plates and then Ikea goes and he puts in a sink or whatever and puts something on, on, on top and now I think this is interesting because it's for the for the viewer who is not really informed it's also like a, you make it like a Tom mm -hmm. it's it's something which pretends to be a Fundstück but it's is aber nicht mm -hmm. yeah and this I think that's perverse yeah sure yeah. that's the uh, that's also part of the fun in it, it I, when I made the, the title, I was thinking of this, there's a, a, sit, a sitcom, a British sitcom called The Young Ones, which I loved when I was young. Um, and in it, this one character says, um, well, he's, the, the show, the, that episode is called Bored. And I, I was re-watching it, and he says, he's a punk, but he's a kind of cartoon punk, and he says, I'm bored, 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 bored. And I, and I was thinking about it when I saw this. <laughs> and so, the, you know, a found object, Fundstücke, it's a thing that's been around for hundreds of years, not hundreds, but over 100 years. And these are literally found on the street, though. They're not, a found object is often something like a ready-made, one buys it, but these are f literally found on the street. Uh, and I find it, I find it, so there's, a, I have an image often in my head, like a line drawing of something. So here it's, we have this thing, and then it's exploded, and then it's back to itself, but it's different. But it's the same material, with a bit of epoxy, a bit of glue added, of course. But there's always a little, you know, life's not so tidy. Mm -hmm. Things don't add up no. completely. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> But it's, and it's also part, you did a lot, I mean, five or six of them, right? Yeah. And all, they have all different shapes. So it's also in, in an installation, I think it's quite interesting to, to, have, to have this. Yeah, so, um, but what, I, what it's also interesting about this now to the, to the newer work. Mm -hmm. This is 2017, mm -hmm. right? And now we come to this object over there. Because now... What I didn't know, and this was for me unfamiliar with your work, when I um, asked you on the phone, like, okay, this black form, which looks like a handy uh, surface, but this is a Fundstück? And you said, no. <laughs> no. No, it's no Fundstück. So, ah, okay. Yeah. So um, what, I, what I'm interested in, yeah, what happened? What happened? I know, well, I think it was this, um, you know, these slightly weird couple of years that we had. I, it, I, I always, up until then, I'd felt like the using of found or used objects, it gave me um, material to work with. And, a, a, you know, I make a rule system for myself. And then 
after that time, I, I, you know, I like making the rules, but I also like to bend them. And so I wanted to, I wanted to expand the rules <laughs> of what was allowed. And, and again, artists, makers, and uh, people who make anything, I think we, you know that we make all sorts of conceptual uh, boxes for ourselves. I'm allowed to do this, I'm not allowed to do this. Um, and these pieces, I think, are, an, are, a, are a kind of a running away with that concept of what you're allowed to do. <laughs> so a few years ago, I don't think I would have been allowed. That many of the, the there are links. So many things are, are based on a an observation mm -hmm. or on a, an experience. So even in sitcom, they say, you know, write what you know use those things that you know well. So all of these pieces, whilst not found or used, they have been in my studio for a long time before I end up making something with them. Yeah, but it's also, mm. but it's also um, found objects in the terms of the, of the um, rope, because actually they are not they are they are new, okay, yeah. but they are actually already existing. Weil das solche Hebe Hebe um, Bänder sind. Yeah, round slings. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can also see in four thousand kilogram. Um, it's it's actually printed on it. So it is also something which you and also these two holdings. You know the yellow yeah. stuff mm -hmm. also comes from digger teeth. The digger teeth. Yeah, dig, from from this bugger. But uh, but we talked about it earlier. It's yeah. also based on an observation. A lot of the pieces are, you know, something I've seen on the way to somewhere else. And this was, um, I kept seeing these trucks, which are you know these flatbed trucks, which have a there's a there's a kind of driving bit at the front, and then here there's nothing there's nothing, and they have when they're building stuff, they have these round slings in these kind of baroque patterns hung on these hooks at the back and I somewhere I've got a photograph of it it just it looked kind of like a you know a decadent castle or something but made out of these you know building materials and I thought that was funny and it's, it's similar here that it has this I, I made the first one of these for a an exhibition in a um, like a former castle which <laughs> has a really golden da -da -da -da, uh, and it's a little bit also, you know, I come from Sweden and from Birmingham and now from Berlin. And, and in Swe it's Swedish uh, uh, sort of traditional uh, architecture, there are all of these things. These, oh. I don't know what they're called. Carla would know. Yeah. Anyway, and also a bit like a bit with hair. I used to, there, there are autobiographical elements or more obvious ones which I may not have allowed to filter through previously. I used, to, I used to have my hair in these really tight, heavy plaits, which sometimes even had this form of this like curled up thing. So Affenschaukel, no? No, I mean, insane, oh. insane. Like, what was I doing? And like, <laughs> I, had a, I have a really strong memory of I met, I, when I was at school, I had two plaits and my hair was so thick um, that it made these really fat plaits and the, I, I saw <laughs> the person who used to sit next to me a few years ago when I was doing the show, which I made this for in Birmingham. I grew up in Birmingham. Uh, and, and she said, ah, oh, yeah, you had those plaids and you were so keen at school. And when the teacher said something, you would whip your head around and your plait would hit me full in the, <laughs> in the face. And so there, there's a, I was actually thinking about that the whole time because these things, mm. were, they have this weight. They would really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And um, again, now with this with this black form, I think this is also in, an interesting element within this. Um, it looks with this big rope much, you know, it looks like such a small illusion of something mm -hmm. handy. But it's again something where you think, okay, this is a total black. It's a black square mm -hmm. format. Mm -hmm. So actually, it is this piece. One could say, if I would now be a student uh, art history, I would say, oh, it's about communication, and it's off because 
whatever, you know, you can't see it. There, but normally, because we normally we are in this virtual space and time, and we can talk to the people, but here it doesn't work. But also it is, for me, like this minimalistic, minimalism thing, you know, you have this black um, shape and it's a void. It's, it's nothing. You can't, there's no access to it. Mm. And I was asking myself whether, did you, did you maybe, is this about the mystery about time and, uh, um, and uh, representation also or something, which is, in the hand, it doesn't need to be represented, you know, but what is it besides the material you use and the illusion of, an, of the form of a handy which it represents? Mm. It's interesting that you bring up the relationship to time. That's been something I've thought about a lot with making previous work. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, though, it, it's kind of in a chain of events which began with the piece behind everybody, which is called Un Undead Undead. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to have to go back, yeah. go, go to that to explain what's going on with this one. Um, <clears throat> Undead Undead is uh, these polished digger teeth, and they came about because I had, I'd bought some bagatina, some digger teeth, and I had them, I wanted to do something with them, but I, you know, it, I had them in my studio for quite a few years, mm -hmm. like on the, on surfaces, and then it was only preparing for another show in 2019, I think, I, I, by then I had a mobile phone which had the exact same dimensions as the flat surface mm -hmm. of this digger tooth well, it was a different size and shape uh, and then so I polished it mm -hmm. I thought I'll see what happens well I'll see what happens and I'd been talking to my daughter who was then uh, how old were you then I was said seven maybe six a, a lot about vampires and uh, you know this this these digger teeth then became like uh, giant vampires but also vampires don't show up in mirrors and uh you have yeah it's true yeah <laughs> of course like everybody knows um so there's this ping pong of things going on and so from those i had the idea of this mobile phone and then that developed into a series of pieces called um Super Call Me Fragile Ego, mm -hmm. uh, which were mud gullies, uh, waste gullies, which you have in your garden or around the house, which take away the waste. And they have these insane, uh, like, um, hordenartige shapes, like, like, like ball sacks and penises and but they're all under the ground and in the surface of those I put a piece of black glass mm -hmm. um, and there I was thinking about I was thinking about this upskirt phenomenon mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know with the mobile watch, phone under the mm -hmm. uh, but it, less the less of that as a a reality I, I know it's a reality but less of that as a real thing more as a a symbol of, aha, I can see something, you don't know that I saw it. Mm. And this was a, a feeling of this ag aggressive feeling, but also there's a, there's a narcissism involved mm. in that and also within this mirror and within what we're looking at. How many times a day is it again? It's loads. Mm -hmm. Somebody did, mm. my husband told me, somebody t did a test of how often they touch their phone every day and it's like, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> and so that led to this. They, so there are all these different things kind of layered around on this glass. Oh, right. okay. And also it, it's, a, it's a pun for me too that, the, you know, this building materials, these ridiculous kind of um, heavy things. We were talking about Oldenburg earlier, right? Mm -hmm. but mm. there, are the, there are also these kind of pop references for me, yeah, going backwards. I think, but this is also another topic, 
um, but I think also with the with this black shape, it it when I you know I think about minimalism, also about when I see your work. Yeah, and of course the, the these. Um, works by Donald Judd where he has the aluminium or the wood where he puts bla um, plexiglass on top, you know, mm -hmm. these cubes. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, and I love Donald Judd because he's so funny. Yeah, and then, and also, but you know, also this combination with the rope, which reminded me, of course, I thought Robert Morris mm -hmm. with his felt, yeah. these filz, filzarbeiten, grape felt on the wall. Which, which, are, which are also these giant vaginas, right? Or that's yeah, like how everybody else is looking at it exactly. later. Sexual, yeah, yeah, but, but this is the interpretation. But I thought that it's, it somehow, somehow this has to do something with the work, in your work. Mm. And then the teeth, it's really interesting. You mentioned this before because for me, um, I saw the other pictures of the other t tooth and I thought immediately not so much about uh, Dracula, also here vielleicht schon mit diesen Kanten, but I also thought about James Bond, der Beißer. Oh God, that guy, yeah, you Jaws. Know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's interesting that, that you used and it's Undead, Undead, the title. And oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, we didn't talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, but what you do is you have this, um, you take this old found footage stuff, mm -hmm. which one sees it's, it's uh, gefunden alt, and you polish it. Yeah. So you come actually back to the real material it's made of, and it looks really new then. Yeah. It, and this is the title, Undead, Undead, is really something you can read both ways. You can say, die Vampire sind natürlich nie tot, you know? But you can also say from the material, actually now it's dead. Because before it was this huge bugger and it had immer so gearbeitet and mm. suddenly now it's on the wall, it's an art piece. It's dead. dead. It's dead. <laughs> but it's, yeah. like, it's I, I think, and I, I know that you mentioned where this actually undead and it comes from. It's, yeah. It, I, so it's, that's, people, it's had nothing to do with my interpretation. So it's, no, but people yeah. may know it. Uh, it the the um, uh, Bella Lugosi's Dead, the song by Bauhaus, uh, the 80s band. Uh, and the chorus is undead, undead. So it's Bela Lugosi's dead, undead, undead, undead. Actually, it's three times, but twice was better in the title. Um, and But it's funny because, you know, Bauhaus, the band were called Bauhaus, obviously, after the movement, but now there's Bauhaus. <laughs> and I'm there every day, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and I also think that because you mentioned this pop thing, I think that you, in this exhibition, you also use more from elements of pop culture, actually. Yeah, of course. You know, with the teeth, like this film thing. Yeah. And, and um, this is something which is for me also a little bit new. I didn't know this from, from, your, um, from your work. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the handy now. Like this, the idea of the sandals is like now, mm -hmm. and now we go maybe over to the gym, chimney, chimney piece with the jeans because the jeans are 80s. There are gebleichte um, jeans. Bleach jeans, yeah. Genau. So, but this is this pop cultural um, elements which mm -hmm. are somehow, I think this makes this. There are so many connections in the work in this exhibition which. It's a good choice, I think. You know, it makes sense to, to show it, and it's great. So the chimney. Um, there again, minimalism, bricks. You told me you had this Carl brick. Andre, yeah, yeah, of course, right? The fire bricks. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, of course, God, I haven't thought about that with re reference to this explicitly. I didn't think about it when I was making it, but I have been listening to that um, Death of an Artist by Helen Molesworth. Oh, right. Have you... It's a, a, so, a hot tip. Anyway, I was obsessed with uh, the bricks as a teenager uh, because, they, because they had this psychedelic quality of the, the idea of equivalence, that this is this, this, and this is the same, and then this is the same as well. That's gone through a lot of the... The work, anyway, that, that's a side note. That doesn't really have, yeah. The, the piece, the, this new piece, uh, Chimneys, is called Shimmy Shimmy Shaved Air. <laughs> shimmy Shimmy Shaved Air. A lot of different things come together. Um, 
So there are autobiogra directly autobiographical elements in some of these. So we all do things that everything we talk about and do is autobiographical, but here it's referring to a particular place and time. There, there are bleached genes, which my foster brother was a teenage skinhead, and uh, the contradictions of growing up with that and my hard left eccentric mum in one household is something that has stuck around and these chimneys are, and the chimney pots are based on those which are still built in the area where I grew up around Birmingham. Um, yeah, exactly and I think that um, this shaped air like skinheads have yeah, shaped hair it's also this, this a, a game in the... In but, but shaved air, they shave, obviously the chimney pots shave the air, but the whole thing came from re-watching Mary Poppins. Um, so I'd become aware, I mean, I watched Mary Poppins as a kid, but then I re-watched it with my daughter and uh, just realised what a weird film it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so these... Um, mud gullies, which are called Super Call Me Fragile Ego, obviously is a play on Super Cali Fragilistic Expialidocious. And here, Shimmy Shimmy, because there's this chimney song. And, but the, there, the, there is starting to be critical theory written about Mary Poppins, the film, and Disney, and their relationship to capitalism that they purport. The illusion is that they are um, making a critique of capitalism because Mary Poppins stands for freedom and Bert stands for the happiness without access to finance because Bert's poor. And the family stand for the great evil of you know big banks. Mm. The thing is, they have a brief flirt with escape and then at the end of the film everything is exactly how it was before poppins is back in the sky the bank is standing and poor old bert nobody cares um, and it's a little bit the same in most of my work that we're flirting with things changing but yeah, but, <laughs> but I think that first, you know, you take these bricks and you create with this very basic Baumaterial um, mm -hmm. a chimney, like the illusion of a chimney, yeah. which is phallic. And then there comes this, this blue things out of there. Of course, like, I have, I, yeah. But, it's, <laughs> but, you know, for me, surreal is poor. Of course, God, my God, I didn't think of that. The clouds. René yeah. Magritte. Right, of course. You know, Jesus. like, hello. And, um, and this is something um, which is embarrassing. <laughs> well, I mean, he was not so, so bad, you know. No, no, he was great. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's, um, you, this is one way to read it, of course, you know, and also the phallic and all this. But it's, um, I think this is also a good mixture about this, um, what you do and um, what you are also the background, you know, what you don't see because the Mary Poppins for me, you don't see it, no. I did, you can also find this in Google und zwar wo die auf den Dächern tanzen, tanzen. Mehr braucht man nicht zu sehen. Because mm -hmm. also in the beginning there comes twice this Rauch raus. Mm -hmm. And yep. of course it's like this jeans, smoke. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, of course. And, but the, and the, the underlying thing that I find interesting is in all of those things is that there's a multiplicity of readings and possibilities. It, so there's a, there's a bigger thing going on that I find, I've always found it really interesting that mm. you can have contra many contradictory viewpoints about this glass of water. Mm -hmm. We can all think different things about it. They could all be true in a way um, and that, that, that actually is something which goes against the grain of a lot of uh, history yeah. the history has been that we this is how we are to see things and yeah. I think now many people are thinking well but maybe a multiplicity of ways to look at something is <sighs> more interesting. I always come back to Rashomon, you know, this film, Rashomon. Oh, okay. 
where, yeah. where they tell the Kurosawa, where they tell four different ways of a story of a murder mm -hmm. through, the view, through the eyes of four different people. Yeah. 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 Still working through that one. Um, so we did actually go through the exhibition like a little uh, tour. Only the, the very small piece oh, in, yeah. in the further back. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. So. It's, yeah, for the last, it's also coming full circle. It's um, two of the same along the way. It's uh, two found uh, shoelaces, schnürsenkel, again, literally on the street, and they're knotted together into. We could talk a lot about knot theory, but another time. Um, but let's talk about illusion, because mm. for me, again, this is, of course, everybody can say this maybe, but um, it looks a little bit like an, this, uh, this, uh, so a mini octopus mm. in Wasser, mm -hmm. but it also looks a little bit like a talisman. So I ask you, is it a fetish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, a, 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 well, because I read this book of knots. There's a book of knots. It's really thick. And not sour fetishes sometimes. People used to use them for writing with. There's a language of knots. Mm -hmm. um, and then people use knot theory, which is a mathematical theory to deal with d dimensionality. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, you know, useful knots. Yeah. Chipping knots and, <laughs> and, and knots for holding things. And I love that, that there's the, there are these diff very contradictory levels. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, in a material sense, it gives you that feeling of a fetish, because a fetish is something which is removed from its, um, it, it's sort of analogous to kitsch, isn't it? It's removed from its usual use and context and elevated to a kind of particular pleasurable state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I felt that, making that, yeah. Even so, it's so smart, yeah. yeah. Well, for me, my, you answered all the questions I had, but I'm Thank sure you. that there are a lot of other questions. Which Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Yay. you. Thank you. <laughs>